A pleasant good morning, honorable members, and those under the sound of my voice. This is a great day to be alive and to give praises to our God. Today in our Moments of Impact devotional segment, I'll be sharing with you a devotional entitled, The Pit, The Prison, and The Palace. In Genesis chapter 37, a story is recorded about a young man by the name of Joseph, who was given a dream by God that he would one day become the savior for his family. Joseph told his family about the dream and was hated and envied by his brothers. As a result of their hatred and envy for him, they sought to concoct all manner of evil against him. They stripped him of his coat and threw him in a pit, hoping to destroy his dream. He was then sold to the Midianite merchantmen for 20 pieces of silver. Joseph's list of woes didn't stop there. His brother staged his death by dipping his coat in blood and reporting to their father that some wild animal must have killed him. It's amazing the length people will go to destroy your dreams. Next, Joseph was sold to Potiphar. While in Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife lied on him and said that he was trying to have an affair with her. As a result, Joseph was now placed in prison. While in prison, God used him to interpret dreams. His ability to interpret dreams gave him an audience with Pharaoh who had a dream and was seeking interpretation. As a result of interpreting Pharaoh's dream, he rose to national prominence by being placed in charge of the royal palace and second in command of the entire land of Egypt. In conclusion, let me remind each of you under the sound of my voice that God sometimes take you through a series of trials simply to get you to your destination. When you go through your trials, like Joseph, you must maintain your integrity and your connection with God. I leave you with this final thought today. As you go through the pit and the prison, don't get discouraged. Don't lose sight of your dream. Your next stop is the palace. Sila, think and act on these things. Let us pray. Our gracious and eternal Father, we hallow and we bless your name. We praise you for your mighty acts amongst the children of men. We thank you, Lord, today for your excellent goodness toward us. Even when we don't deserve it, you still freely extend your mercies toward us. Heavenly Father, I ask you today to help us navigate through the different seasons you allow us to go through. Help us to endure the pit and the prison season while keeping our eyes on the palace. Help us, Lord, to maintain our integrity and our connection with you despite the difficulties we face at times. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for the times when we've not been faithful to you. Now, Father, we ask you today, Almighty God, to bless the proceedings of this house. We pray for each of these honorable members. We ask, Almighty God, that you would grant them with wisdom as they seek to carry out their assignments. We pray today, Lord, for your direction and your steering. You said in your word, if we trust you with all of our hearts and lean not unto our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge you, you shall direct our path. And so today, we ask you to direct the path of our nation. And in faith, almighty God, we believe you are working on our behalf and in our favor. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Last week, Saturday, my mom was in a terrible car accident in Lutra. I would like to say a special thanks to the doctors and nurses in Lutra, Dr. Ajul, Nurse Cooper, Nurse Fernando, Nurse Ellis, Nurse Curry, and Nurse Gardner. Many thanks to the EMT drivers, Mr. Neville Sands and Mr. Jason Thompson. Special thanks to the doctors and nurses at Doctors Hospital Thanks to the Water and Sewage Board of Directors and the executive team and staff members. Many thanks to my colleagues who reached out to me via phone and via text. Many thanks to my family and friends. My siblings and I can't thank you enough. My mother is now home resting comfortably. <laughs> Honorable members, when this house suspended its sitting last evening, we were debating a compendium of bills dealing with the 2023 budget, 2024 budget. The honorable member for Carmichael has indicated his intentions to speak. At this time, honorable member, I presume you're ready. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Carmichael. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker. Honorable members, Bahamians everywhere. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God, my strength and my redeemer. Mr. Deputy Speaker, God sends many persons in our lives, and he does so so that when we find the right ones, we cherish them, we love them, we honor them. I've had the pleasure and honor, Mr. Deputy Speaker, of many persons coming into my life who have left an indelible impression. Dr. Kevin Bethel, Sir Franklin Wilson, Sharon Wilson, Basil Dean, Garth Johnson, Arthur Yearwood, Sir Milo Butler as a child, Sir Lyndon Pinlin, Perry Christie, Philip Davis, and the list goes on. My team from Carmichael. One such person, Mr. Deputy Speaker, was the late Honorable Bradley Bernard Roberts. He left an indelible impression, Mr. Deputy Speaker, on me and in my life. This morning, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I dedicate my contribution to this budget debate to the Honorable Bradley Roberts, big bad Brad. Mr. Deputy Speaker, in his autobiography, Big Bad Brad, Mr. Roberts opined, I never started out thinking that I was going to be a politician. Politics was hardly ever discussed around the dinner table when I was growing up. But as fate would have it, I was lucky enough to have lived during moments of great historical change in the Bahamas, and even luckier to have been given the opportunity to contribute in the shaping of my country. I was not unique or special growing up. I had no particular talents. What I had was the determination to work hard. With seven children to feed, clothe, and educate, my parents could afford few luxuries in our little wooden home in Delancey Street. Yet somehow, I persevered against many odds that were stacked against black people in the Bahamas in the 1950s and 1960s. I managed to make a name for myself. I managed, with the strength of incredible friendships, to make a good living in business. I managed, for which I am most honored and proud, to be a servant of the people of the Bahamas for more than a quarter of a century of my life. All in all, for a kid who started out selling vegetables grown from dirt 
I dug up from the graveyard on Augusta Street, I didn't do too bad for myself. I dedicate, Mr. Deputy Speaker, this contribution to the late Big Bad Brad. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Today, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I rise on behalf of the people of the great constituency of Carmichael. I begin my contribution, Mr. Deputy Speaker, to support this budget for security and progress by thanking Almighty God for his steadfast love and the many blessings he has bestowed upon me, my family, and us all. The blessings bestowed upon me, both big and small, contribute or continue to sustain me and this government as we work to transform the social and economic trajectory of the Bahamas. Mr. Deputy Speaker, before I begin my substantial contribution, please allow me a few moments to express my sincere thanks to my wife, Clara, of 35 years, our sons, my mother, Pat Patricia Bell, my prayer warrior, my father-in-law, Frederick Chicken Taylor, and the entire Bell Taylor Seminate clan for their unwavering support of me. Since I decided to run for political life, my family has been by my side working behind the scenes to support my work in Carmichael and in this government. Of course, Mr. Deputy Speaker, what could I say about my team, Carmichael? Mr. Deputy Speaker, my team, Carmichael, has been by my side every step of the way, through thick and thin, in good times and in bad times, when we lost and when we won. And Mr. Deputy Speaker, my team, headed by its executive chair, Ms. Rosalind Miller, the executives, my coordinator, Mr. Perry Forbes, are all seated in the gallery today. I would ask that we give them a round of applause. This is my team, Carmichael, Mr. Deputy Speaker, who have encamped around me from the fiery darts of the wicked. And I thank each of you and love each of you for it. God continue to bless you. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, we on this side are different from members opposite. <laughs> there are many, many clear differences of this, which are evident. One clear difference, Mr. Deputy, is our leader, the Honorable Philip Davis, the member of, for Cat Island, Ramke and San Salvador. Throughout this debate, much will be said about the budget presented by the Honorable Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance. Undoubtedly, those who wrecked the country's finances will have much to say, and I see the Honorable Competent Authority here. They can have their say, but the record is clear. Under the leadership of the Honorable Minister of Finance, the finances of this country are far better off than the wrecking crew which preceded him. For this, the Honorable Minister of Finance and his team at the Ministry of Finance must be congratulated. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, I am proud to be part of this progressive Liberal Party government and proud of our work. To my cabinet colleagues, our parliamentary team, and the leadership of the progressive Liberal Party, especially our stalwart counselors, the backbone of this party. Yeah. Thank you for everything that you do individually and collectively to advance the work of this Davis-led administration. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we are in our 50th year of independence, and whilst there is much more work to be done, we have, as a country, made tremendous progress. This progress, was made possible by this country's founders, such as Sir Lyndon Pinley and others. Included, of course, is George Smith. I wish to convey my sincere condolences to the family of the late, the Honorable George Smith, whose commitment to his country and the Progressive Liberal Party was absolute. He was a true nation builder. May his soul rest in peace. I would also like to extend- uh, Honorable member. 
sorry. Um, I'd just like to remind <laughs> persons in the gallery that you're not allowed to, to clap, even though I'm, yeah, so you're not allowed to clap <laughs> in the gallery. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> Even though he's fiery and I, I can feel the spirit, but you know. <laughs> Never try to contain member. themselves, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Yes. <laughs> Instructed. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, I would also like to convey my deepest condolences to the family of Chris Mortimer. Chris and I grew up in Holy Family Catholic Church. Both of us come from devout Catholic families and attended CCD classes and remained friends over these past decades. Chris was just a good person, pure in heart and poor in spirit. On behalf of my mother and my family, we extend condolences to Chris's family, especially Ms. Mortimer. And I say to you, Ms. Mortimer, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil, for thou art with you and your family. I now turn, Mr. Deputy Speaker, to Carmichael and the growth and improvement in Carmichael. The constituency of Carmichael is one of the largest in the country when measured by the number of registered voters, Mr. Deputy Speaker. My work in Carmichael relies on a solid network of volunteers who give freely of their time and resources to ensure that the various initiatives in Carmichael succeed. Of course, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I am convinced that I have the best team in the Bahamas. Second. And I am forever grateful for the dedication of Team Carmichael. God continue to bless each of you and your family. Mr. Deputy Speaker, Carmichael is a diverse area with multiple distinct communities with varying priorities and needs. As its representative, I have accepted this. And our approach is to have the communities in Carmichael inform and determine their preferences. I believe this approach is correct, as no one knows a community better than its residents. Since being elected as the Member of Parliament for Carmichael, Mr. Deputy Speaker, a number of initiatives have commenced and are beginning to bear fruit. As members would recall, voters were under lockdowns at the last general election. Curfews were maintained, the economy was in ruins, and unemployment was high. In response to the enormous economic challenges facing residents in Carmichael, the constituency office began directly assisting persons with job placements. Constituents would attend our community center and provide information on their qualifications. Volunteers would then search various advertisements and the Ministry of Labor's database to match qualifications with one ads. Mr. Deputy Speaker, on the 15th of October, 2022, a job fair was held at Onatol Rogers High School, Faith Avenue South, by the Department of Labor in collaboration with the representatives of the constituencies in the Southwest Corridor of New Providence, including Carmichael. Approximately 1,300 job seekers attended that fair. I am pleased to report, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that 232 persons were directly employed. Additionally, on the 5th of March, 2003, 2023, a job fair was held on the Flamingo Gardens Park in the Carmichael constituency. More than 600 persons sought employment at this fair. I am pleased to report, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that some 191 persons were secured, secured jobs during that fair. On behalf of all the residents, I thank the Director of Labor and his fine team at the Department of Labor. I also express my sincere gratitude to all the government and private sector employers who unselfishly participated and continue to contribute in the Department of Labor's job fairs. I also thank my constituency office, as our records indicate that since coming into office, 491 persons have been employed. God bless you. Mr. Deputy Speaker, while assisting persons in gaining employment and financial independence is the most desirable outcome, we recognize that direct support is sometimes required. This is particularly relevant given the sharp increase in food in the global and domestic markets. The Carmichael Farmers Pop-Up Market was established in response to this. As a matter of fact, the pop-up market started during our campaign, thanks to Mr. Perry Forbes. The Farmers Market is held at the constituency office and parks in Carmichael several times per week and provides fresh fruits and vegetables to residents, residents at no cost. No cost, Mr. Deputy Speaker. 
We also deliver fresh fruits and vegetable packages to the aged, the shut-in, and sick of Carmichael. The varieties of fruit and vegetables vary weekly and provide residents with high-quality nutritional food. Thousands of pounds of fruits and vegetables have been distributed at the farmer's market. The market continues its weekly distribution, and shortly, it is our anticipation that we will begin to distribute vegetable seedlings to encourage people to grow nutritional food. Mr. Deputy Speaker, Carmichael benefits from having several large parks and open spaces. While the land has been allocated, decades after the creation of communities, some of the land remains vacant and overgrown. Over the past 18 months, we have begun clearing overgrown areas in consultation with residents. Our goal in Carmichael is to have all of the parks properly developed and preserved as public spaces for residents. To date, Mr. Deputy Speaker, some 53 homes in Carmichael has been repaired. 161 old, derelict, and abandoned vehicles have been removed. A retention pond has been created in Bel Air to alleviate flooding. 69 overgrown properties have been cleared, and we are in the process of clearing more. We continue to distribute food vouchers, clothing, and other basic necessities to residents of Carmichael. We have commenced outreach program to our elderly and our children through our urban renewal office. We have cleaned and are now beautifying the retention pond on the Flamingo Gardens Park. We have repaired our parks and ensured that they are properly lit to allow children and residents to play and exercise respectively in a safe environment. We have cleaned up the entire Carmichael community and erected banners and flags and photos of our national heroes throughout the community in celebration of our 50th anniversary. And Mr. Deputy Speaker, if I may, I brought some of the banners so the Bahamian people will see. As you go around in the Carmichael constituency, you will see this is Sir Lyndon Pinland, of course, the father of the nation. This is prominently displayed through our community. We also have Sir Milo Butler. I could recall as a child when he was sworn in as Governor General, being on my father's shoulders as he was sworn in as our Governor General. As a matter of fact, Mr. Deputy Speaker, we even have the Honorable Member for Kalani. <laughs> no discrimination. This is what independence is all about. God is good. You got him? So, as you, as you traverse, and, and, and the team here, the team here, Mr. Kalani, sorry, honorable member, the team that is seated here, we voted on who we would have put up in Carmichael. No discrimination. We ensure that everyone is prominently displayed. Yes, Mr. Deputy Speaker, together we are building a better, safer, cleaner, and viable Carmichael. It is a new day. And we are not finished yet, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Having regard to the various issues we saw and the need for an organized, structured approach to addressing these issues, I am proud to confirm the creation of the Carmichael Development Association. I thank the Honorable Attorney General for consenting to the incorporation of this. We now have our certificate of incorporation. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I have consulted and collaborated with the Honorable Prime Minister, my cabinet and parliamentary colleagues on this side on creating the Carmichael Development Association. The CDA is a nonprofit organization formed to improve the lives of the constituents of Carmichael. The organization's charter provides that its goals include, but are not limited to, developing cleaner, safer, healthier communities, working towards safer communities by providing crime fighting and preventative initiatives, introducing policies and programs to reduce conflict and foster a sense of concern and care among Carmichael residents, organizing community projects, creating open communication networks with the government, and granting relief to necessitous persons. Mr. Deputy Speaker, it is essential to note that in no place in the CDA's charter 
is there a reference to political affiliation? And it is intended to improve the lives of all residents of Carmichael. In the upcoming months, residents will hear more of the Carmichael Development Association as it becomes fully operational and begin its work. Carmichael, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is on the move. Residents are reminded that walk-in meetings with me are held as much as I possibly can, and I know I've not been doing it as often, every Friday. More information can be obtained, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, from our office on Asheville Street, and the office is open every day, weekday, nine to five. Mr. Deputy Speaker, over the past few days, there have been much discussion on the contents of this budget, and everyone wants to know how it impacts me. How will this affect my family? These discussions are understandable, healthy, and valid, as the national budget does not exist in a vacuum. Its contents directly impact the lives of everyone. The Honorable Minister, the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of Finance understands this reality and has sought to balance our fiscal real realities with our economic goals as best as he possibly can. Mr. Deputy Speaker, in our blueprint for change, the Progressive Liberal Party promised that if elected, we would one, immediately begin a comprehensive review of the taxation regime in the Bahamas, two, reduce fat to 10%, and three, transform the tax system to make it more equitable and progressive and to encourage national growth and prosperity. That is what we promised, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and this is what we will do. We have undertaken a comprehensive review of our taxation system. We are transforming our tax system, and we have already reduced fat back down, and we have done it to 10%. This Davis administration, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is on the move. For a layperson, Mr. Deputy Speaker, these budget debates can become confusing, and some of the terms may, be, may not be too familiar. As I have done in the past, I will do so for persons unfamiliar with various terms. For instance, recurrent expenditure. Those are the expenses such as salaries and pensions which recur repeatedly, occurring continuously. The capital expenditure are the funds set aside for new projects such as the building of the hospital in Grand Bahama. Revenue is the money collected by taxes and fees for various government functions. The difference between the expenditure and the revenue is called the deficit. This is the sum borrowed to fill the gap. As we consider these terms, a few realities must be understood and accepted. These all relate to commitments long being made, which must now be paid. For example, the government must pay the interest and principal of the monies borrowed previously, such as the $44 million spent to dredge the Nassau Harbor in 2009. This is part of the national debt. The government must pay the pensions of civil servants. Unlike the private sector, there is no savings fund for the public sector pensions. We have, to, we have a system that is called pay as you go. The government must pay the benefits for public sector workers, such as health insurance. This is no minor bill which now runs into the tens of millions of dollars annually. When it all boils down, much of the budget is fixed and precious little is, avail is available for discretionary spending. Unfortunately, over the past decades, the credit ratings have gone down as the national debt has gone up. Hence, there is a need to exercise greater fiscal prudence than ever. This budget of security and progress represents the fulfillment of our pledge, our commitment, as we amplify efforts to transform the tax system to make it more equitable and progressive, and to encourage national growth and prosperity. Mr. Deputy Speaker, to encourage national growth and prosperity, this budget introduces and extends various programs designed to expand economic prosperity to all our people, all, and not just the select few. 
The budget introduces for the first time a program to completely exempt Bahamians who wish to build at least five homes, which they will sell for no more than $300,000 from customs duties on the materials to build those homes. Bahamian businesses and individuals have complained that we roll out the carpet for foreign investors and close the door on, lo on locals for decades. But it is a new day. Just as hotel developers, developers are eligible for full custom duty exemptions on building supplies, Bahamian businesses and small contractors will also be entitled to the same benefit. Small contractors will have full access to this program by themselves or grouped together. Full access, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Additionally, this budget creates additional opportunities for families or groups who come together to buy properties. Under this budget, persons can construct or buy duplexes or triplexes as groups and receive a full customs exemption when an owner occupies each unit. Let me break that down for everyone to understand. On average in the Providence, a piece of property 50 by 100, 55,000 square feet, costs about $70,000. If three persons come together, three family members, siblings, or whomever, and they determine that instead of buying three pieces of property, which would cost $210,000, they can now buy one piece of property, build a triplex, and each of them can move in each of those units. And each of them would be entitled to first time home owner's exemption. It never happened before. We in the Progressive Liberal Party, Mr. Deputy Speaker, see housing as a fundamental right and critical component of stable communities. This is why, in addition to supporting small private enterprises focused on affordable housing, we have launched the most ambitious government housing plans in recent years. Unlike the previous FNM administration, which not only built no homes, but told the Bahamian people that it was not the competent authority's policy to build any homes, the Department of Housing, under this PLP administration, led by the Honorable Member for Elizabeth, is building again. It is a new day. Yes. And I might add, Mr. Deputy Speaker, not just here in New Providence, but across multiple family islands. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the budget extends the concessions of the Family Island Development Encouragement Act. Unlike in times past, the concessions are available throughout the country and not just a few select islands. On infrastructure, this budget provides the funding for critical infrastructure across our archipelago. Most importantly, under this Davis-led administration and under the able and competent authority of the leadership of the Honorable Member for Tall Pines and the Minister of Health, the construction of the long, overdue, brand new, state-of-the-art hospital in and for Grand Bahama is underway. Yes, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I was there. This isn't just talk. Shovels are in the ground. By this achievement, Mr. Deputy Speaker, this Davis-led administration is doing in this term what five sitting members of parliament for Grand Bahama could not do in the last term. I repeat that. By this achievement, Mr. Deputy Speaker, this Davis-led administration is doing in this term what the five sitting members of parliament for Grand Bahama could not do in the last term. Five. Compare our records. Grand Bahamians, a vote for the PLP is a vote for progress. Point of order. Okay, yeah. The chair recognized the honorable member for Marco City. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy. I didn't want to interrupt the uh, the member, but but I just thought he his repetition unfortunately um, forced me to my feet. Uh, Mr. De Mr. Deputy, the airport in Grand Bahama was destroyed in 2019 in September. From September 2019 
to the election. It's a two-year period. This administration has been in power for at least the same, roughly the same length of time. And the airport that he's speaking about, Mr. Deputy, two salient points. One, shovels went in the ground for a photo op. The airport, the airport, Mr. The airport, Mr. Deputy, the airport, we have not determined yet the location or the design for the airport in, in, in Grand. Can I, can I complete? Can I complete? So, uh, one minute. So, they have not determined location or design, and the funding is in question today because the government has taken out. $1 billion loan line item contrary to what they said about the PPP. Now, I'm, I'm through. I'm through now. Thank I, just, you, I think the point is made. The, no, the point is made. Yes. By what is made is that Grand Bahama, the people of Grand Bahama voted overwhelmingly. The people for Grand Bahama voted overwhelmingly for the free national movement. Gave them five seats. And they gave them five seats because they believed within their heart and their soul that if they elected y'all, we all would have done it. Five. And y'all ain't do nothing. And all y'all sat in the cabinet. So, so, so Mr. Deputy Speaker. But since he's talking about the airport, since he's talking about the airport, let me say to you Grand Bahamians, look at the track record. Look at your track record. I submit to you that a vote for the PLP is a vote for progress. It is a vote to guarantee security for your children and your children's children. I'm talking to you, Annie B. I'm talking to you, Uncle Belly, Uncle Barry, all you all down there in Grand Bahama. <laughs> and it doesn't stop there. Under our able and aggressive Minister of Grand Bahama, Grand Bahamians, in addition to getting your new hospital, you will also get a new airport. So you talk about it, you said we could do it. We will continue to revitalize, rebuild, and restore your community and your tourist sector. And Mr. Grand, and Grand Bahamians, we will not stop until we wipe every tear from every eye. You've gone through enough, Grand Bahama. You've gone through Dorian. And you've gone through that FNM administration. We need to wipe your tears, man. Enough is enough. Mr. Deputy Speaker, and all of what we are doing, all that we have achieved so far, all that we are about to do, has been done. After we reduced VAT from the FNM's 12% to 10%. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I submit this is progress. Very much so. Our country, Mr. Deputy Speaker, faces no significant brand, threats <laughs> due to climate change, which requires <laughs> tremendous investments. We need hospitals. We need schools. We need new roads. Due to the increasing frequency and strength of hurricanes due to global warming, we need more seawalls and resilient infrastructure. There is no easy answer. And when members opposite seek to persuade you that they have a clue, remember their track record. Whilst this budget is forward thinking and advances the transformative policies of this progressive liberal party government led by the Honorable Minister of Finance, we cannot have a fair debate, Mr. Deputy Speaker, without considering how the destructive policies of members, members opposite over multiple administrations placed us in this hole, all of us in here. Destructive policies, Mr. Deputy Speaker, such as the 60% increase in value added tax. Add to this the creation of an overly complicated VAT system and the results were clear. Compliance plummeted. Revenue plummeted. Their plan failed. However, here they are today with all the answers. But Deputy Speaker, members, members opposite 
was so busy intermeddling in matters and placing undue influence in cases, instead of ensuring that we did not have to budget once again to replace and or address line items that were already dealt with by this administration between 2012 and 2017. One such thing, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is the funding for additional vessels for the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, a matter raised by the Honorable Member for Freetown and the Minister of National Security. Mr. Deputy Speaker, protecting our borders is fundamental, and we remain committed to provide the Defense Force with the tools and trainings required to secure this country. That is why, in coming to office in 2012 and assuming the Ministry of National Security portfolio, the late Dr. Bernard Nordich and I oversaw the implementation of the $232 million Sandy Bottom Project. The Sandy Bottom Project remains the largest undertaking in the history of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force and involved the decentralization of the Defense Force and the acquisition of new classes of fleets of vessels. Today, our Defense Force is the most modern force in the entire region. It was a proud moment for me, Mr. Deputy Speaker. In 2013, thereabouts, when I went all the way to the Netherlands to commission, or rather to ensure that there was a handover of the Durad Knowles. This is the Durad Knowles. This is what we gave the Defense Force. To the Durad Knowles. Put it there. Name him Isn't she a beauty? <laughs> he is a good man. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I was also very proud in 2014, less than a year later, when I attended the commissioning of the HMBS Arthur Dion Hanna, named after the architect of bohemianization, the late Arthur Dion Hanna. And the boat, this is the 80 Hanna. Isn't she a beauty? Yeah. Not anymore. What they did, uh, Look at this. This is what we bought. Eighteen million dollars. Eighteen million dollars, Bahamians. And I want Bahamians to listen and look at this. This is critical. I'll put this here. Now you, you would take note of us. Would y'all do this? That this is one class of vessels. Each of those vessels, Mr. Deputy Speaker, cost the Bahamian pay, taxpayers eighteen million dollars. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, in an article from the Tribune, and I have it here to table, it was noted that the HMBS Arthur Dion Hanna was involved in an accident, sustaining damage to its port shaft and gearbox in November of 2017. Now that's less than three years later. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I know Boatsman. But I know that a boat less than three years old or three to five years old is still considered a new boat. Well, yeah. That's correct? Yeah. Good. Still considered a new boat. But that ain't just no ordinary boat. This is $18 million of the taxpayers' money. The article reported that in April 2018, the cost of repairing the Arthur Dion Hanna was $1.5 million. Admittedly, this is no small sum, but a sum, in my view, in our view, that had to be expeditiously paid to prevent further loss and damage. And they had insurance money too. And damage, we have to we have, see, we have to be serious here. Members opposite have all the answers. Now they are the experts in government waste and balancing budgets. Perhaps they can say what happened next. Maybe they could explain why a three-year-old vessel was not repaired and is now a total loss to taxpayers. Now here we are today. The Minister of National Security must now come to this honorable house to ask for money to replace the, the, the vessel the FNM failed to repair. Maybe they can advise how to recover the millions lost from just that one debacle. 
By not repairing the vessel, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the FNM, in my view, sought to rewrite history. But in the hearts and in the minds of the Bahamian people, our A.D. Hanna will live on and on. He will never die. He'll never be forgotten. The only thing left for us to do now is to decommission this boat. $18 million. It was deliberate. It was deliberate. Okay. Had to have been deliberate. Because the Minister of National Security was so busy interviewing witnesses, <laughs> along with the Minister of Health, <laughs> instead of concentrating and ensuring that the Defense Force got the requisite resources they needed to ensure that we protected our borders. But here we are. We talking about basis, but let's be serious and frank about it. This is unacceptable, and someone ought to pay. Mr. Deputy Speaker, there's none, there can be none. It was only neglect, neglect. It was only bad laws and bad policies. Let's not forget, let's not forget their bad deals which continue to deprive the government of critically needed revenue. Madam Speaker, let me repeat that. Yeah. Let's not forget their bad deals. And they have a history, Mr. Deputy. Mr. Deputy Speaker, which continue to deprive the government of critically needed revenue. Mr. Deputy Speaker, last month, around the opening of the Nassau cruise port, the, I was watching the news when I saw the Honorable Member for Kalani comment that the Nassau cruise port is the FNM baby. And just ironically, they have the thing in red. <laughs> Say, the Nassau cruise port is the FNM baby. Now, admittedly, I usually dismiss the antics of the opposition. However, his comments struck a nerve, but not for the reason he may think. On the 27th of May, 2023, the member for Kalani said, we're very happy about this project. The PLP was somewhat against this project. He went on to say that he is certain that the PLP would be at the opening, in his words, all teeth smiling from air to air. Madam, Mr. Deputy Speaker, this interview was simply incredible. Another attempt to rewrite history and obscure critical facts from the Bahamian people. The Progressive Liberal Party was somewhat against the project, he said. Absolutely not. What is more accurate, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is this Progressive Liberal Party is and remains against bad FNM deals. It is as simple as that. Mr. Deputy Speaker, it struck a nerve because it made me remember a conversation I had with the late chairman, in my book, the late, our late chairman, emeritus of our party, Bradley B. Roberts. Everybody know Mr. Roberts had what is called the garbage can. And so, well, you need to listen to this. You could run, you know, maybe the minute you're running. Before his death, before his death, you have an emergency. Come back, Come back carry on. No use hit and run. But you want to hear this baby. Before his death, Mr. Roberts, known for receiving documents in his garbage can, gave me a copy of this. I got this from Mr. Roberts before he died. A draft opening. A draft offering dated July 2018 titled Unsolicited Proposal for the Management and Develop of the Prince George Wharf and Revitalization of Downtown Nassau. It's dated the July 16, 2018. And Mr. Deputy Speaker, I'm going to table all of these documents so that the Bahamian people could see what it is we're dealing with. We're dealing with budget. A budget of over $2 billion. And the members opposite keep talking about wastage 
and the need to exercise fiscal prudence, and that we are introducing new taxes. But let me show you how they gave everything away. And future generations going to pay for it. Our children and our children's children. This is critical. Governments are supposed to be continuous. And it cannot be, it cannot be that they hold themselves out campaigning on a matter of trust, transparency, accountability. And this is what they did to all of us as Bahamians. When Mr. Roberts gave me this document, you know, and I remember him, you know, he used to squint and he used to shake his head. He would say, Mr. 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 Roberts say, mind keep, they at it again. They giving away the poor. At that time, I did not fully appreciate what he meant, but I kept this document nonetheless, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I had it scanned to my computer just to make sure I kept it. Today, Mr. Deputy Speaker, this one is for my book, Big Bad Bride. This one, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is for Big Bad Brad. Let me put up this. Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I have here a chat that I'm gonna break down what these figures are for the Bohemian people to see. And in my view, the competent authority must be held to account for what has happened. And we must ensure that this never happened again in this country. Cannot happen. Ought not to happen. Mr. Deputy Speaker, as I said, this one is for the Honorable Bradley Roberts. And Ms. Roberts, his soul is resting in peace. Before I continue, let me say that the Progressive Liberal Party recognize that government is continuous and consequently, the actions of one administration binds the next. This is not about the private company behind the cruise port or their intent or their international or domestic partners. And let me repeat that for the behemoths to hear and for these investors to hear. This, where I'm, where I'm going, is not about the private company behind the cruise port or their international or domestic partners. No, this is about the free national movement and the deal they negotiated on behalf of the Bahamian people. Since the member of parliament of Kalani acknowledges that the Nassau cruise port is the FNM's baby, I suppose that this makes him the baby's daddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And what a daddy he is. <laughs> what kind of daddy he is. <laughs> what kind of daddy he is. That makes you all the baby godfathers. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, there was widespread agreement that the Nassau cruise port required improvement. We all agreed. Yes. We all agreed that the Nassau cruise port needed upgrading. We knew that. The FNM decided that to achieve this goal, it would grant a 25-year lease of 93.19 acres of crown land and seabed, hmm. the most profitable and valuable piece of land in the country sure. to a private company. Mm. 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 25 years and more. Wow. More. The annual fee, listen to this, it gets worse. The annual fee for this lease is the bargain base rate of 50 cents per passenger. Wow. Estimated to generate two to three million dollars per year. Wow. Wow. Now, this isn't a confidential document, and therefore, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I present in this house, mm. and I'm going to table this, the lease, which is registered in the records. Registry of Records, the lease, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is dated the 
the 28th of August, 2019. Mm -hmm. Behemoths, I want you all to remember that date. I'm mm -hmm. gonna come back to it. The 28th of August, 2019. Mm -hmm. Write it down, remember that date for a moment. Mr. Deputy Speaker, what is striking, when you look at this document, they did not even bother to have the government draft the lease. No. The lease was prepared by the attorneys for the Nassau Cruise Board. Nassau. This is a lease of government crown land and seabed. Now, I checked with the Office of the Attorney General, I checked with the Honorable Attorney General, and as an attorney at law myself, who has dealt with these types of matters, the Office of the Attorney General draft the government lease. Wow. But this lease was drafted by the attorneys for the Nassau oh, Cruise Board. Wow. And who do you think? Who do you think? Who do you think? This is a public document. Who do you think are the attorneys? Delaney and Partners. Wow. You all know who Delaney and Partners is? Who was the head of the firm? <laughs> That's the former Attorney General under the Free National oh, Movement. Oh, say it ain't so. Oh, man. What's going on here? Sure. Any of them who in cabinet in here? Any of them who in cabinet in here? What's going on here? Behemoths, I want you all to pay attention to this. Because, because this is fundamental. This is a fundamental shift. It is critical. Mm. It is unacceptable. Mm. And the Free National Movement must be condemned for what they do. Yes. And let me explain why. Let me explain why. Even if I don't get to this presentation today, even if I don't get to Immigration and National Training Agency and all the other departments, this is fundamental. Listen to this. When I look at this document, there are many questions which arise. When we look at the plan, of this document. This is the plan. That's right, you need your glasses for this. Even, mm -hmm. I, even I have one glass and I can't see this. <laughs> this, is, this is the plan, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mm. This is the plan. Goodness, no. Now, this is the plan. But listen to this, let, let me go further with this. I am satisfied and convinced that the Attorney General Office could not have seen this or even vetted this document. No. Because basic fundamental, basic fundamentals are not contained in this very critical document of the most valuable piece of land mm -hmm. in the country. Wow. Now, the Honorable Member for Sinance, he sat as Bria president, right? You were Bria, you were never there? The re okay, <laughs> thank you very much. He is an attorney at law, mm -hmm. and he practices land law. Right. Mm -hmm. This plan that is attached does not have a land surveyor certificate. What? what? So I am, it behooves me how it doesn't have, it breaks the law. Oh, I got it right here. And you were the one of the law? <laughs> so, so, this, this come with the garbage can. So this plan, whenever Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, whenever you, whenever you go to record, or you do these land transactions. You have to record the plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is fundamental for many reasons. To make sure nobody teeth your land, mm -hmm. to make sure you know what is your land, yes. and to give the world notice that the land belongs to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. but there's no signature on it, no survey on this, but it's recorded mm -hmm. at page, mm -hmm. page 294 in volume 13317. Now, let me just read the Land Surveyor Act, section 34 and 35. So, the FNM administration ran afoul of the Land Surveyor Act, chapter 250. Mm. Section 34. Yeah, section 34 Can say, the, the purpose of authenticating these maps is that they have to be authenticated, identified, and deposited, and recorded in the office of the Surveyor General. Mm. There have to be a signature attached. 
Mm. And Mr. White, I think Mr. Honorable Member for Sinanch, you can bear me out on this. But what, what is so significant for me with this is, this ain't just no 50 by 100 in back of the bush. Mm -mm. The most, this is the prime, most prime property. property. And let me say, let me say this, you see? See, I am very suspicious of this. Mm. Because in the Nassau Cruise Port, the Minnesota administration, the government still has several slithers of land in there. Mm. We still have several slithers. Mm. Several slithers of land in there. So if this ain't registered, it is. It is. But it gets worse. It gets worse, uh, honorable member for, for Western and Grand Bahama. Mm -hmm. wow. During my 23 years as an attorney, I have never seen an unsigned registered surveyor plan. My 23 years. In fact, such a thing directly conflicts, conflicts with the law. How could this be? Who approved this? How did this happen? How do we know what the government even leased? Does the baby daddy even know what he signed? Like Oban? No, no, no. What manner of child is this? Well, Oban went missing, so. This is not all, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Not only did they get the land, but they also gave the Nassau Cruise Port the facility fees. Oh my God. Look at this. They gave him the facility fees. What a baby daddy. I can be done. I can sum it all up at the end. Gave him the facility fees. What a daddy. I've never seen this. So today, when the opposition comes here ranting and raving about this budget, about the actions of this administration, our budget, they should recognize that we are plugging the holes that they created. Yes. 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 Mr. Deputy Speaker, listen to this. Listen to this. Let's put this in proper perspective. We talk about the history of bad deals. Well, let's put it out. When the FNM sold, and in my view, gave BTC away, mm. at least the government kept 49% of the shares. Mm. When they struck a deal for the Arawa Container Port, another bad deal, mm. at least the government got 40%, mm. and the public was allowed to purchase 20% of the shares. Mm. Oh no, not with the competent authority, mm. not with him, not with this baby. Mm. They went from 49% with BTC, to 40% to the Arawa container port, mm. to zero, no zero shares? percent, no shares, no ch what? none, no offering, oh, say it ain't so. no offering to the Bahamian people. My God. I've never seen nothing like this. Oh, it is God. impossible. It is impossible for the Attorney General office to have seen this document. It is impossible for the Ministry of Finance to have seen this document and agreed with this. Inconceivable. It cannot be. It ought not to be. That's why you run over here. Mr. Deputy Speaker, whenever a baby is born, the first question we come and we say as Bahamians, who we look like? We what look is like. the weight? Who we look like? You know who does it look like? <laughs> who does it look like? <laughs> Let us look at, look at the toes. What are the features of the baby? <laughs> That's what we do. Mm. Now, babies are being serious with this. Yeah. Serious. This is a serious matter. Because I want you all to look at the numbers. This mm -hmm. thing's serious. We're talking numbers here. But just look at this. From this one cruise port. You all know what kind of money we ought to be getting? Yes. We ought not to be having no sleepless nights and baseless nights talking about no budget. I'm gonna just prime land. Look at that really right now. Yeah. It's over and baby brother. Before I tell you about these numbers, before I get about these numbers, let me just let me just go a little bit further. Mm -mm. I will now, Mr. Deputy Speaker, turn to the offering memorandum of Bahamas Investment Limited Fund dated the 6th of December. 2021. Mm. This is their book that they put out to the entire world, telling them what kind of money they can make every year. Mm. Okay. This. All right. That's how the is. Now, yeah. this document outlines the financial projections and the facts about the FNM's baby. We ain't owning this baby. Mm. This document is not confidential and was widely distributed to wealthy investors all around the world. And I could table this too. The document outlines the key terms of the deal. Mm. And listen, the key terms of the deal now. 
concession period. The concession period is, let's come with the garbage, garbage can, can. Mm. of Bradley Roberts. <laughs> the concession period is the construction period, one, mm. plus 25 years, that's two, mm. plus two years winding down period, plus a 15 year extension Why? option with mutual agreement. What? Bahamian people, so. we have been changing government every five years. Mm. But I can tell you, for all of us, we got to do the calculation to make sure, even if you decide to change government, you better make sure the PLP is the government at that time. Mm. Let me tell you why. It gone further. <laughs> the passenger fee, listen to this. The NASA cruise port, Listen to this. I've never seen this language, Mr. Mr. Member for Sinance. Mm. I've never seen this. The Nassau cruise port will be entitled in its absolute discretion to increase the passenger facility charge and the port facility fee with the U.S. consumer price index of up to 5% a year. God help us all. My Lord. My Lord. That's what they put in there? Any of the former cabinet ministers in here? You all realize this? Well, let me break it down in the numbers, because grits is grocery and money by land. Mm. In 2023, it is estimated, in 2023, it is estimated that the port will earn $78 million in revenue and pay a lease to the government of $2.8 million. What? what? No. In 2024. Check them numbers again. In 2024. No man. The port revenue is estimated, listen to this, the port revenue is estimated, Mr. Deputy Speaker, wow. to be $90 million. Mm. The lease I'm fee to the good. government is $2.6 million. Oh my God, no. In 2025, Lock them up. 2025, $97,600,000 goes to the port. Mm. The government gets $2.6 million. Oh. Oh. Them of bad deals. In 2026, Consistent. in 2026, the, F, the port will get $105 million. How much will you get? The port will get $105 million. The government gets $2.6 million. Oh. In 2027, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the last year of the projections, the port gets $114,800,000. Wow. How much is the government? The government gets $2.8 million. No. Call the police. No, that's robbery. Call the police. Wow. They took the ownership quick. Mm. Wow. Mr. Deputy wow. Speaker, Bahamians, for the period, listen to this, for the period between, for the period between, for the period between, over this five year period, Mr. Deputy Speaker, let me hold up so you can see, mm. over the five year period, the government will get $18 million. My Lord. The port, the port will get. Five hundred and seventy-five no million dollars, eight hundred thousand. More than half a billion. Say it ain't so, Marco City. Say it ain't so. That, don't stop there. Don't forget now. Don't forget the two-year. Don't forget. More? I put the two-year winding down period in there yet. Yeah? Don't forget that. Don't forget that. I'm fifty. Oh no. This old baby brother. Now let's consider. <laughs> Now let's consider, Mr. Deputy Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, listen to this. Let's consider how much they will make from the cruise port that the f and handed over to them over the 27 year period, mm -hmm. assuming that the five year projections will hold. Mm -hmm. They ain't gonna lose no money. That's on average $115 million per year. Mm -hmm. Multiply that by seven, 27. That is three billion Mm. $109,320,000. That is more than the entire oh, national oh, budget we debate today. Mm. Wow. $3.1 billion. Payments, you all understand what I'm saying here today? You, all understand, we, 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 we got this? 
Say me again. $3.1 billion while the government getting less than $90 million. And if it ain't $90 million, it gets worse. No, it gets worse. No, let me get that. Because there's some things that they ought to filter in. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker. That's why, that's why I was a secret. Mr. Deputy Speaker. That's why I was a secret. They didn't let the people know that. This ain't no baby. It's a big It's a blunder. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you something else, but this yeah, is yeah, it won't be unfair. It won't be stay, stay I, it won't be parliamentary. Stay in the square. Not a one point they order. They check and they are they, they right. they so, them. In essence, <laughs> when the FNM and the competent authority signed this deal, they wrote off hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions in revenue, for these 27 years. Mm -mm. What is most disturbing is that the honorable member for Kalani is proud of this deal. No, man. Mr. Deputy Speaker, to make matters worse, this deal was done by the same government. Listen to this. This deal was done by the same government that spent $44 million in 2009 to dredge the harbor. Remember I tell you government is continuous? So if you spend some money to develop your property, you don't think at least you can try and recover that money at least or build that to ensure that it doesn't get into your profits? So you need to subtract that sum, the $44 million, from the sum the government get. It's telling me, in my view, and I know mathematician, but I know if your outcome exceeds your income, mm -hmm. your upkeep becomes your downfall. My God. Huh? My God. So they shortchanged uh, the behavior. People don't even start it. They Google something. Member. Hold on. They Google something. Yeah, the chair recognized the honorable member for Senate. They Google something. This, uh, this, my good gentleman from Carmichael, he is uh, well known. He can make a mountain out of a mirror. He can blow. He can. He can. He can blow. He can blow. He can blow an issue. He can blow an issue right out of right out of proportion. But Mr. Deputy Speaker, I was at the opening of the Nassau cruise port, and there was no member from the Free National Movement Party on the stage at the ribbon cutting. Before the ribbon was cut. The good gentleman, Mamet Kutman, whose family led the project there, on multiple occasions, on multiple occasions, acknowledged Brave Davis and the PLP administration's efforts to bring this project to completion. He also recognized that the Prime Minister, Brave Davis, had supported Honor, this Honorable project member, from Honorable the very member. beginning. Honorable, so Honorable, while while the good Honorable man member, from Michael member, is obviously not in member, Jamaica Honorable, right now where the Prime Minister is on, if the Prime okay. Minister was here, he would set the record straight and he Honorable would say, member, as a PLP member I am warning of opposition, you, I am warning he supported this I am project you. from the very, very beginning. That is your first warning. That is your first. I, I, I'm going to ask speaker. you. I'm going to ask you to People take a can seat. See the photograph of I'm going to ask you to take by your Brave seat. Davis, the member for Cat Island, Honorable Romney. member. Honorable member, I am going to warn you twice. Um, this, is, this is going to be your second warning. I would ask you to take your seat. Take your seat. The chair will now recognize Honorable Member for Carmichael. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, the fact of the matter is that the, the, the speaker has recognized me as more Marco City. Have a seat. One, one minute, one minute, yes, one minute, yes, one sir. minute. Yes, sir. You, you will finish your contribution. Uh, when, you, when you're done, then I will entertain. That's my ruling, and I'm finished. The chair recognized Honorable Thank you, Member Fucker Michael. Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, let's sum up then. Let us sum up. We sum it up, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The, the fact of the matter is, Deputy, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is. Listen. 
The chair recognizes the honorable member for Marco City. Say this again. Mr. Deputy, we are anxious to hear what the member for Carmichael is sharing, and we are listening carefully to all of the details. So we have no difficulty with it. We want you to lay all of those documents. We are absolutely committed to accountability and transparency. So, Mr. Deputy, the only point I wanted to raise with you, sir, is the member for the member for St. Anne's, and I only got up because it appeared as if you were seeking to name him. And I just wanted to raise this question, Mr. Deputy. The member's point of order was that the case is being, is being made that the free national movement entered into a bad deal. Yes. His, point, his point of order, sorry, his point of order, Mr. Depp, would you be quiet and, so we can have a sense members, of conversation? Members, okay. so members, honorable members. His point of order, his point of order was that the deal, that the deal has been, that order, the deal. Members, Marco yeah, City has the sit, floor. Sit down. Continue, sit, Marco sit down. City. Sit yeah, down. once he's finished, once he's I, done. Mr. Deputy, the honesty, his point of order is that here is a deal that on the stage, and we don't, we're not going to litigate this because we want to hear the rest of this. On the stage, on the stage, he is citing statements made by both the principal of the port and later by the prime minister where the principal indicated that this was a deal that could not, it was started by the FN, but could not have been completed without the intervention of the prime minister. So his point of order, Mr. Deputy, I just, I just want to raise the question, how does that not qualify as a point of order if a deal that he is saying started and consummated by the FNM, but the principles themselves have indicated it could not have transpired had it not been for the intervention of the Prime Minister. So I, all I'm establishing, it was a legitimate point of order, Mr. Mr. Deputy. Thank you, Honorable Member. The Chair recognized the Honorable Member for Carmichael. Mr. Deputy, speak up. Let, let me say, as I indicated before, grits is grocery and money buy land. That's the bottom line. The fact of the matter is, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the fact of the matter is, in 2023, the port will get $78 million and the government can get $2.8 million. In 2024, the port is going to get $90 million and the government is getting $2.6 million. Wow. Mr. Wow. Deputy Speaker, in 2025, the port will get 97 million 600,000. The government is going to get 2.6 million dollars. Wow. In 2026, the port will get 105 million dollars. Wow. The government will get a mere 2.6 million dollars. In 2027, the port will get 114 million 800,000, and the government will get a mere 2.8 million dollars. Wow. At the end of the day, just over this five-year period, the port will get. $575,800,000 mm -hmm. in revenue, while the government gets a mere $18 million. Wow. And it even in $18 million, Mr. Deputy Speaker, because, as I started to say, the fact that the free national movement dredged the harbor in 2009 in anticipation mm -hmm. of the development of the port, mm -hmm. that had to have been taken into account. Yes. Yes, I come into that. It meant that you have to take this $44 million, you just don't throw money away. Yeah. $44 million? Mm. Wow. So if you really subtract $18 million the government get over five years from the $44 million that they paid to dredge the harbor, how much of it is, 26? Yeah, that, means, that means they put us in the hole when they, they sign the minus. Negative. That means when they sign the deal, we were in a deficit. As I explained what a deficit is, everybody remember? A deficit of $26 million. Who does that with their own money? Famous people understand this. And we, have, we ought to call in the competent authority to answer this. That's why he laughed, he laughed. That's a good question. Now, Now, Mr. Deputy Speaker, how could one, the Bahamian people want to know, how could one 
have negotiated such a bad deal on behalf of the Bahamian people. Look at it. Let me sum up this. Mm. Let me sum up this. First of all, in 2009, the government dredged the Nassau Harbor for $44 million. In 2019, they gave a fully dredged harbor away. Mm. In 2009, they executed the lease for 93.19 acres of crown land. And uh, when, I, when I say this, 30, this, it's actually, there was 13 acres. Then they expanded by another five acres. And they got the seabed. So it was in total 93, 93 acres of land, which is the largest downtown commercial area. All we got, all we're getting, is an estimated $2.8 million per year for 93 acres. Nine. Now, the land convincing people else could do the maths. And the mathematicians, the honorable member for Southern Central Land, just could do the maths. You calculate it and see what it works out to be per year. It is egregious, unacceptable. Mm. So mm. Over the five year term, we get 18 million, they get 575 million. The revenue lost by the government include rent from festival place, facility fees, mm. and burden fees. Y'all know those burden fees? That's when you're like, if you have a car, you park in a parking lot. If you have a boat, you park in a slip, you gotta pay. Mm -hmm. They gotta go to there and ain't getting nothing. Oh my God. That's it. A year. That is it. The revenue over 25 years to them is over two billion dollars, and the government then gets the liabilities and they get the assets. Who mm -hmm. do, do, do that? Wow. The company already is bad. Bad deal, Mr. Bad deal himself. The baby daddy is here, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Only the FNM, only the FNM could have cut such a bad deal. Only them could have cut such a bad deal. This baby have no resemblance or any features of any of us on this side. <laughs> look at us. It ain't look like us. No. It ain't us. And we would never have done something like this. But it doesn't even stop there, Mr. Deputy Speaker. My Lord. It doesn't even, it doesn't even stop there. My Lord. Everybody else, the whole team up now. Yeah, so how come you just standing up? Yeah, the chair recognized. You see it, right? Stand up for the first time. Your chair recognized honorable member for yeah, St. Barnabas. Mr. Deputy, <clears throat> thank you, honorable member for Michael. Mr. Deputy, this is so unbelievable that the member is stating here how much the Bahamian people is being has is, has been disadvantaged by this deal. But yet, the government has not stopped the deal. As a matter of fact, Mr. Deputy, the government went over to the opening, yeah. went over to the opening yeah. and partied all night. Yeah. So instead of going over to the opening, they should have gone to say yeah. that the deal, Sir, it makes listen, no sense. Yeah, Don't I, insult the Bahamian people. Okay, member, so member, bad, member, so as bad as the member, deal is, yeah, member, get to Mr. your point Deputy, of order, please. So as bad as the deal is, why did the government let the deal go through? Okay, all right. Uh, okay, once again, that's I, I not listen. That's something. not a point of order, Saint Barnabas. If it's bad for the Bahamian people, okay. If it's the, bad for the Bahamian people, the chair people. recognized the honourable member for Kalani. Mr. That's Deputy. not a point of order. Sit down. Mr. And I'm, I'm warning Mr. you. Mr. Deputy. I am warning Mr. you to sit down. I want you. I want you to sit down, honourable member. I want you to sit down. Sit down. <laughs> the chair recognizes the honorable member for Kalani. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Deputy. Mr. Deputy, Mr. Deputy <laughs> I, I listened to the member for Carmichael. Turn the mic up, please. The member must remember. <laughs> the member must remember there are several factors. One, we are the envy of the world in terms of having the best port in the Caribbean. Two, previous to this port. We were collecting, I think, seven cents, 70 cents per passenger. It has subsequently gone up now to $10 per passenger. In addition to that, in addition to that, in addition to that, the government gets 10% VAT on the revenue, which is added. In addition to that, the port has owned 51% 
by the Bahamian people and 49% by global port. Because remember, 2% goes to the yes establishment. Which means after expenses, the bulk of the money goes to the Bahamian people. So the member's misinforming the, BAM, the, the public here today. He knows he's, he's incorrect. And as the passenger volume go, continue to rise, so does the revenue for the Bahamian people and the revenue for the, for the government. With the, the member Exuma and Ragged Island and, the, and the, the member for Cat Island continuously brags about the number of passengers being brought to the port. The government get, receives 10% 10, 10 VAT on all of that. In 10%, Mr. Deputy. So the government and the people receive the majority of the funds, not as the member has tried to present. Thank you, Honorable and, Member. And, and, and they know the benefit to the Bahamas and the benefit to Bay Street and the surrounding areas. But most important, most important what the member must remember is 10% of facility fees, 10% of the revenue goes to government in terms of VAT, which we never used to get. But the majority of the monies, 51% goes to the Bahamian people. And the Bahamian people, when I say who owns, it starts from the bottom up to ensure that every man has an opportunity to share part of it. Thank you, Honorable Member. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Carmichael. Um, member, are you going to table all of your documents? Absolutely. Thank you, Honorable Member. If they want to see it now in advance, they can get it. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, one thing I've come to admire and respect is anyone who holds the office of Prime Minister in this country, the mere fact that they hold that office, in my view, means that they are worthy of praise. Now, while I believe the honorable member for Kalani may have thought that he was exercising best efforts, I would submit he too, in hindsight, recognized that he has made a tremendous blunder. He dropped the baby again. during the operation. Again. That's what he did. Let me, let me say this. No, let, let me finish. Let me. No, the, the chair recognized the honorable he member dropped, for Kalani. dropped the baby, man. And the, the, and the return to the Bahamian people, and the return to the Bahamian people, one year, two year, three year after the port, versus the revenue to the government before, and the revenue to the Bahamian people. The Bahamian people receives 51%, not what he was talking about, not, not he, the member for Carmichael, not what he was talking about. 51% goes to the Bahamian people. That's excluding what the government gets. The, 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 the chair recognizes the honorable member for West Grand Bahama and Bimini. Mr. Deputy, uh, at this point, I wish to ask for a five minute uh, suspension. Uh, there's a matter that we must take care of uh, immediately. Thank you, honorable member. Yeah. <laughs> the, Is there a second though? Is there a second though? It has been moved. Hold on. Members, Deputy. it has been Mr. moved and seconded that the business of the House Mr. be suspended Deputy. for five Mr. minutes. Mr. As many as are in favor will remain seated. Speaker. Those opposed will stand. The motion is carried. The business of the House stands suspended for five minutes. I'm talking nonsense, man. I'm talking nonsense. Honorable, honorable members, at the suspension, we were debating a compendium of bills. Um, anybody has a question as to what the suspension was about, I'd ask for a suspension for the deputy and I to swap out. So, Carmichael, you are on the floor. I presume that you are now ready. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, just in response to the utterances 
by members opposite Tim Barnabas and then Kalani. Kalani said that this is the best yeah. port in the world. And we agree with it. We have no, there's no difference of opinion yet with that. It is what it is we getting, having recognized that it is the best port in the world. That is the question here today. He's talk about we getting VAT. Everybody paying VAT. Exactly. I looked at it. So as far as I am concerned, in my humble opinion, and like I say, I know mathematician, but the fact of the matter is if everybody paying something, then ain't nobody get nothing. Mm. <laughs> you don't, that can't count mm. in the equation. Mm. You talk about we getting this, there is this establishment of a YES. Who is that? That ain't the government. Mm. That money don't go to the government. Mm. We are here debating the budget. We are here talking about our recurrent expenditure. Mm. We are here talking about capital expenditure. All of the things we have to do. Build new airports. Build all of these schools. Build new clinics throughout our archipelago. Houses. We need money. Houses. Mm -hmm. Where we can get the money from? If you give the port away. Benefit. Ain't no benefit in this for the gaming people. able to retrieve my red book so as members would know exactly what happened global port 49 49% is owned by global port holdings 51% by the Bahamian populace of which of which 2% goes to what we call the yes foundation for sports etc four months post commencement of the port and not later than two months after construction. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, SPDC, SPD, Madam Speaker, it's table my red book. <laughs> no, what I can do, what, what I'm, what I'm going to do, 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 do, when I speak, I can table your file. Madam Speaker, may, may I continue? <laughs> Madam Speaker, the member knows, the member knows, the member knows that there are, there are multiple benefits. He can ask the taxi drivers whether they have benefited. He can ask, he can ask the hair braiders whether they have benefited. He can ask the Bahamian people whether they have benefited. The Bahamian people owns 51% and will continue to share in the revenue. Also, also, if you look at the VAT, the VAT revenue, it has gone up tremendously. That goes to the government. So the member only needs to review the benefits to the Bahamian people so that he can stop giving erroneous information to the populace. Continue, come, Michael. Mr. Speaker, this, Madam Speaker, is simply indefensible. Yes. yes. It is a bad deal. As a matter of fact, I would submit that this is the worst deal in the history by any government and any administration in the history of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. My I've God. never seen nothing like this. It worse than all that? Never. It worse never. than all that? All they had to do, Mr. M Madam Speaker, is to take the previous agreements. How is it? How is it that we don't get a proper equitable right in this sheet, this container port that he say is the best in the world? Mm. How do we negotiate something like this? Madam Speaker, I brought it in black and white because I stand by my figures. I stand by this. Let Madam I stand Speaker, by this. Let Madam Speaker see this. You want to see this? Yes. Yes, Madam Speaker. So, <laughs> now Madam Speaker, that's my time. Good. Make, hold that. <laughs> Madam Speaker, mm. to sum up, in 2009, the FNM administration dredged the Nassau Harbor at a cost of $44 million to the taxpayers. Mm. In 2019, they gave a fully dredged Nassau Harbor to the Nassau Cruise Port. Mm. In 2019, they executed a lease of 93.19 acres of crown land and seabed. Mm. Madam Speaker, all of us know that this is the most valuable land in the entire Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Mm. So I thought, as an entry point. And they only gave it away, Madam Speaker. The government only get $2.8 million a year. My Lord. We ain't getting nothing. And Madam Speaker, over five years, from 2023 to 2027, and I will table these documents, Madam Speaker. This is what the cruise port 
has given to investors all around the world. Mm -hmm. Come and invest. Here is the document. Here is the evidence. This. Mm -hmm. The government get $18 million. Mm -hmm. The Nassau cruise port get Five hundred and seventy-five million eight hundred thousand. My lord. Add to the additional two-year winding down, winding the two-year winding down, Madam Speaker, which is inside the lease agreement, mm -hmm. it carries up to three point one billion dollars mm -hmm. more than our national budget. The revenue the government has lost from this deal is the rent from the festival place. We don't get that. Mm -hmm. the, 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 it goes to the Nassau Cruise Port. The facility fees, they get that. Mm -hmm. The birthing fees, they get that. They get nothing. Mm -hmm. wow. Two point eight million dollars. Mm -hmm. So whereas we get, Madam Speaker, we get in accounting. I did a little bit of accounting when I was in law school. You had to do a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. You talk about assets and liabilities. We get the liabilities, mm -hmm. and they get the assets. My lord, that Bad is the man. bottom line, Madam Speaker. So let me go on. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Kalani. Application. The only the member can the present the this year. parliament or the Vimy populace what the government received pre port versus post port. What? And he would see that the government receives more. <laughs> but also, the member needs to explain to the Vimy populace if the gross revenue is 500 million, you must take out the cost and the profit is shared 51% to the Bahamian populace and 49% to the poor. Look in the country, you're a lawyer, I'm not a lawyer. Don't let me teach you law here today. For God's sake, you're in trouble if I have to teach you law. Yeah. But you can, and I got the facts. Speaking Bologna. That's what I got. I got big bad Brad here today. He's alive in the spirit and he's speaking through me. God is good. That's what it is. Here he is, Raicha. Big bad bad Raicha. That's what it is. We get this and we get that. Honorable we get enough, that's what we get. Honorable member, you say you found it in the garbage can? Yes, my, Madam Speaker. Bradley Roberts gave to me. I get it from Bradley Roberts, man. Roberts garbage can. Madam Speaker, let me tell you what is so egregious about this deal here. Add, add to add insult to misery. It doesn't even stop there. No. Uh, if, Madam Speaker, if I take my whole time, I wouldn't get the immigration and NTA and, and labor. This is important. This right? That's important. It is. But, Madam Speaker, not only would the, the deal bad, but it's a national disgrace. Because That's good. in this lease agreement, there are provisions that the government, the legislative of land that remains, and the Prince George walk out here, which isn't part of the port. The government have to give them six months notice to do anything with it. We can't touch it. What? No, man. We got to give them notice. Could you imagine For that? Art art. For our things. No, man. Say it Could you imagine that on your private land? Before you do anything, even if you know government. What kind of baby does that? It in there. Stand up and say that. What do you say about that? The Prince George walk and people walk and the vendors out there. We can't do nothing with that out there. That is in the lease. Payment, you all understand what I'm saying? Wow. When you elect a government, you elect a government to represent your interests, not the interests of the other side, mm -hmm. the other people. You represent the people of us, and when you don't do that, you pay. You pay. That is the, that is, that is the crux of the matter, Madam Speaker. You want me to read the agreement? I'm going to, let me read the lease agreement. Yeah. I can read that part. This ain't a red book, this agreement. And you want to point out, point the out. member says the government gets nothing. The government is getting, the government is receiving, to, to give the exact amount, $19.44 per passenger. And even they would admit that the passenger volume has increased. That's what government, government gets. Gov this would add up to approximately $80 million per year the government gets. In addition to that, the government gets revenue of over $400 million annually to the country. So the member must speak the truth. The member must speak the truth. He tried to. Madam Speaker, 
The provisions, Madam Speaker, the provisions are all contained in here, what the government get and what they get, the lease. This is a stamped and recorded document. And for all payments, for those of you who may not get it from us, you can go to the Registry of Records. It's volume number 13317, mm -hmm. 13317, right page 286. You can go yourself and get it. Mm -hmm. It's available for the entire population to see. Yes. All the versions would be get. I ain't talking no puffs here today. That's a fact. That's what it, it is what it is. It's a bad deal. Mm -hmm. Madam Speaker, and I, I, for the likes of me, I just simply can't see how they could incorporate the Prince George Wharf in this. No. They're going outside the scope. That is why I, I, am, I am convinced, Madam Speaker, that the Office of the Attorney General could not mm. have vetted this document. We know for a fact, and that is, this is not open for dispute or debate, that this document was prepared by Delaney Partners Chambers. Yeah. So that ain't, even, that ain't open for debate or discussion. Mm -hmm. The question is mm -hmm. whether or not the document was vetted by the Office of the Attorney General to ensure that the interests of the government and the people of the yeah. Commonwealth of the Bahamas were protected. And the answer has to be no. Has to be, no question about it. Mm -hmm. I'll be shocked that anyone from the Attorney General Office could come and tell me, as a Bahamian, not even as a member of parliament, but as a Bahamian, I have three sons, and I hope to get some grandchildren soon. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean then, that we passing this down, Madam Speaker, to our children, our children's children? So I speak it as a Bahamian. This is serious business. We had a golden opportunity. The member of, of Kalani dare get up to say that what we used to make and what we get. Yes, we know we're getting a little bit more, mm -hmm. but look at this. I'm missing the point. I missing the point. <laughs> well, this some I'm missing the point. <laughs> well, blow me down. I miss no point. You drop the baby. Table the red book. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I know people can take much more. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. This is a budget for security and progress. It is a sound plan, Madam Speaker, to get us back on the right track and to fill some of the voids left by the disastrous sell-offs undertaken by members opposite. While the job is hard, Madam Speaker, we are ready for it. And through God's grace and mercy, yes, mommy, I'm a prayer warrior, through God's grace and mercy, we are pulling this country and economy out of the blue hole created by the FNM. It is in this context, Madam Speaker, I will leave the rest in the garbage can for now. Mm. Let me now go to my agencies, which fall under my remit. The Department mm -hmm. of Labor, the National Tripartite oh, Council, the Department of Immigration, the National Training Agency. Mm -hmm. but just before I give you an update on these areas, I wish to say how inspired I am by the commitment and dedication of the hardworking senior management team and my PS, Permanent Secretary Cecilia Strawn, for the work, the high quality of work that they're doing in my department. God continue to bless each of you. Madam Speaker, you would recall that in 2013, the government, this PLP government, created the National Tripartite Council. The rationale for creating the agency was simple. Our people must be prepared, trained, to, and max to maximize the benefits of this economy. Madam Speaker, the NTA is designed to build a competency-based training and job placement program for all Bahamians. Yes. Madam Speaker, I am pleased to report that the National Training Agency offers the ILM Level 3 Certificate in Leadership and Management. The beneficiaries of this certification have been officers from our uniform branches, the Department of Social Services, and the private sector. And Madam, Madam Speaker, this is very important. We send our officers on all kinds of courses, but the bottom line is, Madam Speaker, is whether or not these courses are accredited, whether, they are cert they are, whether there's any certification. Mm -hmm. I am pleased with the National Training Agency, Ms. Agatha Marcel and Mr. Terry, Terry, Terry Murray for the work that they're doing in ensuring that all the courses we offer there are accredited, are certified. It means, it means, yes. Madam Speaker, that they can they create more opportunities for these persons who yes. go through them in terms of promotion, in terms mm -hmm. of acceleration, in terms of ensuring that they're able to matriculate into a university or college. Yes. 
Madam Speaker, Excellent. in the past fiscal year, four cohorts have passed through the National Training Agency, three in New Providence and one in Grand Bahama. In September of 2022, 114 students completed the program, and to date, 70 of these students are fully employed. The latest cohort con concluded in New Providence on the 26th of May with another 140 persons. Madam Speaker, the National Training Agency is there to do more. And I invite every Bahamian, young and old, to take advantage of the training opportunities that are available through the training agency. Yes, yes. Madam Speaker, as it relates to the Department of Labor, I will present and table in this house the newsletter, newsletter presented by or produced by the Department of Labor. Let me say, Madam Speaker, the Department of Labor is not mandated by law to produce an annual report or any form of document. But the able leadership and competence of the Director of Labor saw the need to produce reports, timely reports and newsletters of the updating to ensure that the Bahamian society is kept up to date in respect to our labor force. Yeah. Madam Speaker, I believe that the time has come that all of our state agencies mm -hmm. ought to produce a plan in terms of what are their projections, their goals and objectives for a particular year, and they ought to produce a report, an annual report, mm -hmm. outlining what they have achieved, where they have fallen short, and what they intend to do to ensure that they meet said goals and objectives. Yes. I wish to commend the director and the Department mm -hmm. of Labor for the job that they're doing. Yeah. Madam Speaker, we're continuing to deliver on our country decent work program. Mm -hmm. As you know, we're the first English-speaking Caribbean to sign onto this country decent work program. And Madam Speaker, in addition to having achieved a number of objectives, the first being the increase in the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. This government did that yes. in less than two years. Amen. And we are now moving towards a livable wage. Yes. We are now moving towards a national apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. I won't say anything I won't say much about it, Madam Speaker, today, because the honorable member here for Yamakraw will address that. He heads the committee dealing with the National Apprenticeship Program. Madam Speaker, I am pleased to report that very recently, I, well, last week, as a matter of fact, I was in Switzerland, and I attended the International Labor Conference. I had an opportunity, Madam Speaker, to meet with the new Director General of the International Labor Organization, the ILO. Mr. Henry Hongbo. And I am pleased to report, Madam Speaker, I have presented before the body of the ILO. Mm -hmm. And following that, we had a bilateral meeting. And he asked that I express to the Honorable Prime Minister, the cabinet, and indeed to the Bohemian people, his profound respect mm -hmm. that we, lead, we are leading the English-speaking Caribbean in rolling out the country decent work program. That is commendable, yes, Madam Speaker. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, yes. as a matter of fact, Madam Speaker, the Bahamas got a grade of A right. from the ILO. Mm. All right. Madam Speaker, let me take it further. The, I, the, the Director General has asked that we extend an invitation to him to come to the Bahamas later on in this year to express his profound respect and admiration. Uh -huh. That is, exactly. Madam Speaker, what we are seeking to achieve. Yes. Madam Speaker, mm -hmm. there are 191 million people who are unemployed worldwide. 191 million. Wow. As for us in the Department of Labor, through our labor on the blocks, labor on the campus, it's we have done right. a number of initiatives. Yes. And I am pleased to report, Madam Speaker, that as a result of these labor on the block initiatives, mm -hmm. in excess of 3,000 people have been employed. Yes. This is a new day. Yes. Madam Speaker, we will continue to work to ensure that every Bahamian who is desirous of employment gets it. Mm -hmm. That is what this New Day administration is doing. Yes. Madam Speaker, as it relates to the Department of Immigration, I am pleased that that department is, under its able leadership of Director Katira Ferguson, doing a fantastic job. We're doing heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. We continue to have 
very large numbers of migrants, irregular migrants from Haiti and Cuba. Madam Speaker, for this year, we have repatriated 2,526 irregular migrants. Wow. Now, working, Minister, working. in essence, for the first four months of this year, Madam Speaker, we'd have, we would have repatriated more than half of all of the irregular migrants we did for the entire last year. Oh my Lord. That is significant. It is also very, very mind-boggling because of these trends. It means then, Madam Speaker, that in this budget, we have put 1.9 or so million dollars for repatriation exercise. Now, last year, we spent 1.9 million dollars. And if present trends continue, it is likely, Madam Speaker, that we would be coming back to the cabinet, to the parliament, for contingency funding for repatriations. Yeah. Madam Speaker, we have observed a number of trends as it relates to migration. Madam Speaker, it is a cause for concern because whereas traditionally, we would have seen a boatload of irregular migrants from one particular country, we are now witnessing significant boatloads of irregular migrants from varying countries. Mm -hmm. Madam Speaker, in one boatload of persons, persons were from Nicaragua, Italy, wow. Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic. We've never seen this before. Mm -hmm. And so, Madam Speaker, I had a meeting yesterday with the United Nations Human Rights Commission. I also had a meeting last week with the International Organization for Migration, and they have sought to partner with us to ensure that these trends, where we see a mixture, a divergence of nationalist nationals from various countries, that be able to seek to address it. It is something which is very significant, and the IOM and the UNHCR is concerned about it. And so they are also working with us to see how we can best address that. Madam Speaker, as we're talking about budget, for the period, the 1st of January, 2022, to December 31st, 2022, the Department of Immigration revenue totaled $105 million. $105 million, Madam Speaker. For the fiscal period, the 1st of July to March 2023, the revenue collected was $79,920,315.92. The largest in our history. Wow. So, Madam Speaker, apart from recruiting the largest number of recruits in the history of immigration, apart from having the largest numbers of repatriations, we also have seen through our improved efficiency the largest amount of revenue collected by the Department of Immigration. Wow. I commend you, Director Ferguson, and your team. Madam Speaker, we're continuing to observe a number of trends. In addition to the number of persons that I indicated had been repatriated, we have seen a significant number of children being sent on these unseaworthy crafts, mm. unaccomp or what we call unaccompanied minors. Mm. It's a cause for major concern. As a matter of fact, my, Madam Speaker, on one boat, there were 51 children. Wow unaccompanied. And so it's a cause for major concern, Madam Speaker. Between this period, January to June, some 99 children have been repatriated to their home countries. Mm. Madam Speaker, it is a major concern for us. It is something that we are seeking to address and amend our policy. But in addition to that, Madam Speaker, given the smuggling trends, we are seeking to strengthen our laws and we are in the advanced state of strengthening our Immigration Act. And so, Madam Speaker, that is significant. Madam Speaker, we take note of a number of trends, emerging trends, the substantial number of children, persons legally entering the Bahamas on a round trip ticket, but canceling their tickets immediately upon coming into the Bahamas in hopes of being smuggled into the United States. Mm. non bohemian females disguising their pregnancies mm. and to airline officials and law enforcement officials and giving birth within weeks of landing in the Bahamas. Mm. The movement of certain large groups of nationals from a particular country to a country, through a country to our north, to our south, sorry, 
by private charters, the use of larger, large, larger motorcrafts, including Bertrams and Vikings, versus speedboats to smuggle irregular migrants, and the unprecedented number of combined large groups of mixed nationals. Just last week, Madam Speaker, there was a group from Haiti, apart from the one I spoke of earlier, Ecuador, Brazil, and of course, again, Italy. Madam Speaker, I wish to assure the Bahamian people that the Department of Immigration and its law enforcement partners are up to the task. From our records, from the 1st of June to the, to the first, sorry, from the 1st of January to the 1st of June, there were some 20 interceptions at sea by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force and the US Coast Guard. These interceptions netted a total of 1,678 migrants from several countries, predominantly Haiti and Cuba. Madam Speaker, as I indicated earlier, some 2,562 migrants were deported from the Bahamas. Hence, when you subtract the 1,678 migrants which were intercepted at sea, it meant that the Department of Immigration arrested, prosecuted, and deported 884 irregular migrants through our country. That is significant, Madam yeah. Speaker. And it was done through our Operation Restore. Madam Speaker, I go further. Immigration Enforcement Justice Month conducted apprehension exercises which resulted in the arrests of a number of Haitian nationals, Venezuelans, Colombians, and other nationals, all of whom are currently at the detention center awaiting deportation. The District of Inagua Immigration, along with the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, interdicted a vessel with 20 migrants on board, all of whom are now at the detention center. The Drug Enforcement Unit and Operation Ceasefire arrested nine Chinese nationals for overstaying all of whom are at the detention center. Madam Speaker, given the public outcry of the significant number of irregular migrants in Abaco, the Department of Immigration commenced operations in February of this year. This is a multi-agency approach, Madam Speaker, and I wish to thank the members of parliament for North Abaco and Central Abaco for their support. I would say, Madam Speaker, between the 20th of February and the 5th of June, some 630 migrants from Abaco have been taken into custody. Of that, some 282 have been charged before the courts convicted and have already been deported. Another 152 have been detained for delinquent fees and they have brought those fees up to date. Madam Speaker, let me say that I am immensely proud of the work undertaken by the hardworking professionals at the Ministry of Labor and Immigration and its agencies and departments. The teams at the ministries, departments, and agencies understand that our success is measured by the results we can achieve on behalf of the Bahamian people. A national budget, Madam Speaker, sets the priorities of the government. In this budget, the department has sought to remain focused, ensuring fees are collected and of course, better services rendered. During this debate, the public has heard two very different stories, one from the government and another from the opposition. This budget marks, Madam Speaker, another example, the difference that leadership makes. Mm -hmm. The last administration, in my view, was the worst in our history. No administration borrowed more money for a four-year period, and no administration was as fiscally destructive. No administration fell asleep at the negotiating table with investors and gave even more than they could have hoped for. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Madam Speaker, they love to make noise but offer no solutions. Mm -hmm. This budget is a fair, balanced solution yes. to our issues, yes. much of which can be laid squarely at their feet. They did bad, and I pray that no government in the future would ever be as reckless in their governance that they would dish out the family silver and have nothing to show for it. My Lord. Madam Speaker, this is a serious budget for serious times. It is a budget that will improve the financial strength of the Bahamas mm -hmm. and support the economic transformation of our archipelago. I commend the Honorable Minister of Finance and his dedicated team, Carmichael, 
fully supports this budget. Yeah. May God continue to bless us. May he continue to keep us. May he continue to make his face shine upon us. And may he always continue to give us his peace. Because Michael supports this. Yeah. Thank you, Honorable Member. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Kalani. And I'm, I'm a matter of clarification. The FNM had brought Atlantis here. The PLP opposed the Atlantis project. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they said, when they become government, they will cancel it. Mm -hmm. The PLP opposed, according to what the members said, they opposed the port. Every member we hear banging in support of opposition to the port. I now challenge them, if you oppose it, if it's a bad deal, cancel it. Just as they have done with the FNMs, with the roads and parks contract mm. and employment mm. contract. Mm. Cancel it. Mm. 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 Yesterday you don't As many. <laughs> the chair recognizes the honorable member for North Abaco. This is a bad deal. This is a bad deal. All right, so cancel it. Good afternoon, Madam Speaker. Good afternoon, colleagues. Honorable members, honorable members. There's a member on the floor. Oh. Well, no. Can we please just follow the process? Let's tone it down on the government side and do this thing properly. Where are the documents the gentleman said he was going to take? Now you want to tone it. Now you want to tone it down after you've been yelling and I are up all day. I don't want to tone chair. it down. Now you want to tone it down. So two sets of rules. Two sets of rules. Thank you, thank you, honourable member. Member Chilton. Hang on. Sit down and wait, man. Sit down and wait. What was the I had John Pinder from South Abaco running on. Before, before in the property. Yes, we will make sure. Thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Dr. Abaco, you may proceed. Good afternoon. Madam Speaker, this afternoon I begin with the words of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Madam Speaker, I rise on behalf of the good people of North Abaco. Madam Speaker, I would like to extend condolences to Hank, Rus Hank Russell and Renee McBride on the loss of their daughter, Aniqua Russell. Also, Wernice Major and her family on the loss of her one and only son, Jerome Piara. Jay, as we called him, was also my cousin and my friend. I would have lost my aunt, Brenda Cooper, this past week as well. I pray that God will strengthen our family, especially Christopher, her only son. Madam Speaker, I wish to thank my, fa my parents, Leslie and Ruth Cornish, and my entire family for their unwavering support. I would like to thank Team Cornish for the hard work that they are doing. I also wish to thank the chairman and the executive team of the Progressive Liberal Party, North Abaco Branch. I also extend an early happy Father's Day to the world's greatest father, my father, Pastor Leslie Cornish, and all the fathers in North Abaco, by extension, the Bahamas. June 1st marked the beginning of another hurricane season. The people of North Abaco and Abaco as a whole, I am sure, are reminded of the catastrophic, uh, the catastrophic events of during that befell us in 2019. But we are a strong people. We are resilient people and we are a God-fearing people. So out of the ashes of despair and the rumbles of the storm, we rise. 
We rise because our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ, the rock of all ages. This month, hundreds of students will graduate from learning institutions throughout the Arbor Coast and the entire nation. I wish to congratulate Ms. McIntosh, the teachers and the entire staff at Cooperstown Primary School, and Ms. Longley, the teachers and the entire staff at SC Boodle High School for the work they are doing with our children. I especially wish to congratulate the graduates. I attended those schools' graduations last week. I am looking forward to attending Central Primary School, Central Abaco Primary School, and Patrick J. Battle High School graduations soon. I do apologize, however, to Ms. Curry and the Foxdown Primary School graduates for missing their graduations today. I never take for granted the opportunity that the good people of North Abaco have afforded me to serve them and to advocate on behalf of them in this great house. I am still focused on the purpose for which I was put here. Though sometimes the storm clouds may rise, I believe that with God's help and the leadership of this great party, the Bahamas will move forward. It is certainly an honor to be a part of a government that is determined despite setbacks to get this nation on the right path. Under the former government, the good people of North Abaco and the entire Abaco were severely neglected and forgotten. Nevertheless, my purpose here today is to bring hope and healing to the people of North Abaco. We will not be distracted, I will not be distracted, and I will not be silenced. Abaco will move forward with the rest of the Bahamas. Indeed, this government is making many strides to improve the life of Bahamians, and this has been clearly demonstrated in, the years, in this year's fiscal budget. It is truly a progressive budget that will solidify the Bahamas' place in the region and the world at large. With many thousands of graduates leaving high school for the workforce, it is encouraging to see that the Bahamas' economy is showing signs of recovery, even though we still have a long way to go. Abaco's economy is still has not reached its pre-Dorian state, but we remain hopeful that it will exceed that. Madam Speaker, in this budget, a new public procurement bill was focused with focus on micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, women business, youth-owned business, and family island-owned business was presented. This bill, this bill is good news for the Bohemians and especially up and coming entrepreneurs and small business owners. Many of the small businesses in, in North Africa were hit hard by the storm and pandemic and are in need of much support and an injection of funds, of funding. One of the goals of this administration is to diversify its economy and increase food security by investing and innovating agriculture. North Abaco too needs considerable investment in the area of agriculture as the possibilities of export of agricultural products is quite feasible with the port in the area. Hopefully, we will see the hydroponic program and Red Bay Initiative operating in our primary schools very soon and projects like the, Gold Yolk, the Golden Yolk Egg production program will reach North Abaco. Many years ago, residents of North Africa were giving land to farm in the Treasury area. This project has been neglected over the years, and in some cases, the land was retrieved by the government. Those farmers were not giving the support that was needed to work the land. This budget provides farmers with the assistance needed to develop their land. Madam Speaker, I understand BTBI is expanding into the family island, and Abaco is one of those <coughs> islands. There was a groundbreaking held two weeks ago. Hopefully our young people will take advantage of the opportunity to improve their work skills. Madam Speaker, illegal immigration continues to be a sore point in our nation. This is why it is encouraging to see that the, this budget provides for the purchase of four new vessels to patrol our seas and the future expansion of resources needed by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. 
Also, Lord Abaco looks forward to the Shanti Town Action Task Force operating in Abaco. Madam Speaker, the people of North Abaco, I am sure, welcomes the step that the government has taken to strengthen its alliance with international partners to defend our borders and fight climate change. New resources for hurricane preparedness and planning are also outlined in this budget. I am especially encouraged by a new youth guard that will strengthen our capacity at times of national emergencies. There are so many encouraging components of this budget and I really would like to use this time to point out to the Bahamas and this house that North Abaco will not be forgotten. In my latest communication, I would have pledged my commitment to keeping my promises to the constituents of North Abaco. I told you about the lack of proper air conditioning at the clinic in Grand Key, and today I can report that two units are being installed in that facility. Also, the administrator's building in Grand Key that we met in a state of disrepair is being renovated. I am also delighted to report that the construction of a new storage water tank in Grand Key is completed. The new water system in Marsh Harbor is in use. However, we still await an official turn handover to the Water Sewage Corporation. We are also still waiting on much needed upgrades to Cedar Harbor and Blackwood Well Fields and Green Tail Key storage tank and pumping station. In my last communication, I told you about the deplorable condition in the sporting facilities throughout North Abaco. Lawrence Hepburn and team from the Office of the Prime Minister Special Project Team recently traveled to Abaco to, access, to assess the state of these facilities and initiative and initiated steps to renovate all of the sporting facilities in North Abaco. Quotes were submitted and we anticipated that the work will begin in short order, one park at a time. Additionally, this administration increased the member of parliament's constituency funds, and a considerable percentage of this money will be used to assist with upgrades, repairs, and beautification projects in North Abaco. I have already distributed funds to local government to add a family section with swings, benches, etc., next to the Murphy Town track and ball park a safe family space. Madam Speaker, we are not just saying that we care about Bohemians, but we are showing it by taking steps to improve infrastructure throughout the nation. The, me the member for Fort Charlotte informed me the designs for the loading dock in Green Turtle Key are completed. It is expected that work will begin shortly on that facility. Madam Speaker, that facility, the loading dock, represents the lifeblood of that community. At that loading dock, that community receives their groceries, their building materials, their fuel, and stuff of that sort, which they are in need of on a daily basis. Since the hurricane, that facility was being washed away by the showers and the winds by nature. The minister of Fort Charlotte Mr. Sayers had the opportunity to visit with his team, and I am pleased to announce that, that, that the result of that visit, the, the future loading dock um, plans is, fine, is completed, and he had promised me that in this budget, we will see that facility construction begin completed. So I'm very pleased to report that to Green Hill. <laughs> North Abaco is also excited about the nationwide road repairs initiative. From Marsh Harbor Medical Center to Crown Haven are expected to be included in this nationwide undertaking, as I am sure my colleague from Central and South feels the same from that clinic to Sunny Point. It is also hoped that much needed tools and equipment for Ministry of Works on Abaco will be provided in this budget. I am extremely pleased that this year's budget includes the funding to renovate the airport in Treasure Key. This has been a long time coming. There are approximately 20 to 25 flights touching down, mainly from the United States, daily at Treasure Key Airport. The government official operates from a trailer. It is time for a terminal and an upgrade. Many visitors 
use this airport to access Green Treasure Key, a very popular tourist spot. Treasure Key, a large summer home community, and Spanish Key. This will boost the economic activities in North Abaco. Madam Speaker, many residents in North Abaco are still in need of home repairs. And home. I am pleased to report that urban development has launched and home repairs has begun in North Abaco. Much appreciation to the member for West Grand Bahama and Bimini and the member of Marathon and their team. Abaco thanks you. Deputy speak, Madam Speaker, I was promised by the chairman of the DRA that as soon as funding is available, the DRA will begin constructing homes in Abaco. Madam Speaker, in my capacity, in the office of the Prime Minister on Abaco, I see and speak with residents daily. I get to look into their eyes as they describe their experiences, their needs, and their expectation. expectation. Madam Speaker, it is a very humbling experience. Every time. I am talking about a people who are proud, hardworking, and are accustomed to carrying their own weight. Yes. To see the frustration and the pain in their eyes. I don't take this job lightly at all. Madam Speaker, there are much to be done on our code. However, some critical needs in my constituency are needed. As I mentioned, home repairs, opening of North Abaco Port, renovation of Treasure Key Airport, the new loading dock in Green Turtle Key, repairs to the bathroom block at Green Turtle Key Ferry Dock, repairs to the sporting facilities, and the much crown land requests, which I will take the opportunity, Madam Speaker, to speak to North Abaco to bring some clarity on the relationship that exists, that exists between myself, them, myself, and my colleagues, my colleagues who are the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I sit in the office and their needs, concerns are brought to me. I in turn document them and bring them to my colleagues. Those needs and concerns are assessed by my colleagues in the various departments and ministries. Those needs and concerns are prioritized. Plans are drawn, and those needs and concerns are presented to cabinet, voted on, and are brought to this place <coughs> as a part of the budget. But I do understand, Madam Speaker, the frustration and the pain that my constituency expressed to me daily. Some would say I applied for Crown Land 20 years ago. And I will call the member for South Andres, and I will say, persons are at my throat for their crown down request. They applied 20 years ago. And he would only smile and say, Cornish, I own it. And I thank all of my colleagues for bearing with my impatience. Because Madam Speaker, in truth, he wasn't responsible for the request of crown down 20 years ago. He's only been there 20 months. And I must congratulate him for he has granted. There was crown land granted under his watch for Abercrombie. Yeah. I can say the same of the many persons who work for the government who approach me on a daily basis about permanent and pensionable. You know, uh, I must thank Gigi for her patience when I call endlessly and tirelessly yeah. all hours of the night day. Yeah. Um, she explains to me, Cornish, we know I'm on it. And her track record shows that she is. Yeah. However, <laughs> after so many years of undelivered promises, neglect, abuse, forgetfulness, the people of Abaco, North Abaco, are short in patience. And for that, I understand. This is a job I campaign for. This is a job I knock on doors and ask for. So I have to take what comes with it. I am only grateful and thankful to the living God for the colleagues who I serve with. Because if, as memory served me completely correctly, it was the former administration that when a former member by the name of Frederick Markle Pine 
Remember, the Pine Ridge would have come to this house and told this, that caring government about the needs of the people out there, including North Abaco and Grand Bahama, well, Abaco and Grand Bahama, that they would bang on the desk and speak him down and ostracize him to the point where they didn't even give him the nomination in the last election. All of a sudden, they care to hear from and about the poor people or the hurting people. Their phone is finally working. As if the Bohemian people have short memory or a case of amnesia. Well, I want to remind them, Abaco, I see constituents on a daily basis in my office from Sunny Point to Grand Key, well, Moors Island as well, and the Keys. And they haven't forgotten. I don't know, I can't, I, some person stand here and attempt to speak for the rest of the Bahamas. I can't do that. that to me, that's just misleading. But I will speak for Abaco. That's right. The people I get to see on that's a daily right. basis. They haven't forgotten the treatment. They remember how their family members was placed in a trailer, left to rot for over 18 months. They haven't forgotten that. They haven't forgot, mind you, the lockdowns might have been necessary. I'm not from a medical background. But the cruelty and the inhumane way it was done, they haven't forgotten that. Lord Abaco hasn't forgotten that in this place, the former prime minister would have said that his government don't build houses. Yeah. When North Abaco and Abaco have experienced two governments that build houses, the former Ingram administration and the former Christie administration, after hurricane, they built homes and gave them to the people of North Abaco. Madam Speaker, as I traverse through my constituency, I had the opportunity to speak with a businessman Mr. Rowell, and he indicated to me, he said, man, Cornish, he and I were friends for many years. We went to school together. The people of North Abaco say the PLP isn't doing nothing, man. They're frustrated. I say, Mr. Rowell, what do you mean? He said, we expected massive change. That's why we voted them out. And I understand exactly what he's saying. He wanted the PLP to usher in and just build a bunch of houses and just you know, work miracles. But I am reminded today to just speak to a few things that affect, directly affect North Abakunians, his family, his friends, my family and friends. Since coming to office, the Progressive Liberal Party government has completed, completed the ferry dock in Crown Haven, the community in which he lives. When we came to office, we met planks missing, plywood where people were falling in the water as they attempt to enter the ferries to go on to Grand Bahama. That. that has been fixed. Fixed that. That fixed. This government has opened the economy for his restaurant and business to be open and making money. Not to mention, we've added $100 to the pensioners monthly. We reduced while you add a tax from 12% to 10%. Yes. We increase minimum wage. And to be fair, Madam Speaker, minimum wage basically affected some of those government workers and Abaco persons who was on those 52-week programs and those programs. To be fair, Abaco pay scale is kind of high because the cost of living is extremely high. So it's construction and boating it's been very lucrative trade in Abaco. And Ms. Pinda can speak to the, tour, the tourist industry. It, it's normally, minimum wage did not have that large effect on the pay scale in Abaco, because Abaco pay salaries up on the upper scale. Madam Speaker, my colleague, Gigi again, Golden Gates, would have issued permanent and pensionable letters for persons in Abaco. There was promotion, persons who worked for the government. There was back pay for persons in Abaco. And more importantly, I would wish to point to Mr. Rowell. Those are stuff that I pointed out that directly impacted persons he personally know. Because there's been many policies that we would have passed in this place now that affected 
the entire country. But more importantly, I wish to point this out to Mr. Rowan. North Abago now has a member of parliament that you can see every day. Not only see, one you can approach and have an intelligent, intellectual, respectful conversation. <laughs> Not to be rushed or bombarded by other important events. It is every day, sir. Every day. Every day. From coming to office, the only time I'm not in the OPM office is when I'm here or on the official visit, where that is being renovated. Yes, sir. If you don't mind. Don't worry about it. No, sir. The, the, the funds is going towards renovation. Sorry, I, I apologize. Going towards the furnitures and renovation. Forgive me. I can't afford it like you. I have to use the funds for that. Yes, sir. I have to get the office up and running for my people. Now. Um, well, no, I, I want him. I want him to get it. He needs to hear. He's not really. Why you didn't say something when Kamaika was down? Why you don't say that when Kamaika? You sit down. You sit down. But thank you. I do appreciate your input, and I will take that into consideration. However, however, that constituency headquarters is being renovated to accommodate and make my constituents comfortable. But the headquarters doesn't stop me from being present in my constituency, okay? That 2,500, I will share with you what that does, in case you're wondering. And I do sign checks, I don't give it in cash. Every funeral in my constituency, I assist the family. Every medical health concern, no, I want him to know, perhaps he might have used it in his constituency, it might help him. It might help him to start helping his constituents. Mm -hmm. I also indicated that my constituency funds is being used to beautif for beautification and upgrades to many parks in different areas of North Abaco. I'm just letting you know in case you really truly needs to know. Sorry, Madam Speaker. I'm letting the member know in case he truly needs to know. And hopefully he could use so he could use his information to help in this constituency. Madam Speaker. I thought it was necessary to share that with Mr. Kalani, Rule in North Abaco. Because many members of parliament came wrong. to this place when they, they were, the were a government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and did not care to hear from the member from Pine Ridge as he conveyed the concerns of the poor people or the Bahamian people in this place. They bang on the table, they talk him down, they ridiculed him, they ostracized and ostracized him. Now, today, they care about the more about the poor people than Jam care about Toe. My God, God is good. Toe Jam. Toe Jam love Toe. Or perhaps white like rice. They care about these poor people so much more. Huh? They care about these poor people so much more. Jam. Jam love Toe. Another indication why North Abaco really, really can't grasp and understand the behavior of these members opposite. You speak to their intellectual abilities. That is, that is, that is extremely demeaning. You have a former prime minister, you have doctors, lawyers, you have fish, you, you have every facet of life descended from North Abaco, but you feel dignified to speak to their intellectual capacity or ability. My Lord, My Lord what an insult. But yet, in another few years, you can traverse through those communities and ask them to support your candidate. Ah. Are they supposed to forget you? Do these people have amnesia? they that illiterate that you could actually say these things about them and still ask them for their support? Lord Abaco, I hope you're watching and listening. Your member of parliament respects you yes. very much, and I say to you, take note. You see, because it is said, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad fruit, a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. You can only be who you are. You want to know who a person is? Give them an opportunity to speak, to display themselves. Thank you. Madam Speaker, as we move forward and as we celebrate our 50th of independence, 
I envision a Bahamas that is for Bohemians and that puts Bohemians first. A progressive nation where we feel safe and secure as we celebrate 50 years. I envision a nation where our children are given boundless opportunities and they thrive in the field of education and innovation. I envision a nation that is economically healthy and where we are not in debt to and nor enslaved by any nation. I envision a Bahamas where there is law and order and a man is innocent until proven guilty. Where there is intolerance for hate, I envision a Bahamas that is turning back to God. I envision a Bahamas that is united. This budget takes you in that direction. Madam Speaker, North Abaco supports this budget and wish the Commonwealth of the Bahamas 50 happy, a happy 50th independence. God bless you and God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. The Chair recognizes you, Honorable Member for Carmichael. Madam Speaker, if I may, thank you with leave. I'd like to um, table the documents that I indicated I would. <clears throat> what are the documents with water? What do you want to lead off? What do you want to lead off? Give him a message for me. What do you want to lead off? Okay. Okay. What do you speak for the entire team? Why are you sure I didn't come to help him to nap? You let him take all the blows by yourself. This is a cold one. The chair recognizes the honorable member for uh, Madam Speaker. Well, while we're looking at those uh, documents, I just want to remind my colleague from Carmichael that there's a 2015 conveyance in as his a, name recorded in volume 12450. Madam Speaker, hold on. No, 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 sir. Huh? What, what's honorable in my name? No, no. It's just the one that has a plan that's not been signed, like no, you said no, was an no, issue. No, 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 yeah. So if you're if you're concerned, I'm just bringing that for your attention. There's 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 a, there's a, there's a conveyance that, with a plan. What was that about? Is that, uh, is one that of, the member's personal One of the personal issues business? that was raised when you were when the deputy speaker was in the chair was that the crown lease to the Nassau cruise port had a plan that wasn't signed by the surveyor. I'm just advising that it's not as abnormal a practice as may have been represented here. And there are instances, several instances, where conveyances are recorded, where plans are attached, but they're not signed. Yes. The, the chair recognizes the honorable member for West Grand Bahama and Bimini. The member, the member might wish to withdraw that approach, withdraw what he said, or you might wish to strike it uh, from the records. And if there's a matter to be discussed, that the matter can be raised at another time. But that is not relevant to what we're dealing with today, Madam Speaker. So the member might wish, because you have breached the member's privilege. So please, I wish to withdraw, or the speaker can now uh, strike from the record. Madam Speaker, it's to ask me. I, I will withdraw mention that there is a plan connected to any member here that is not signed. I'm not giving him. I'm not giving a public apology, Madam Speaker. I'm not giving a public apology. I'm. I'm. I'm actually. I'm actually informing the public that the practice is quite common, unlike what is represented here. Back to this matter, the member for Carmichael and, and the member for Saint Anne's are having a conversation about this particular matter, but. But it is against the backdrop of an attorney, former attorney general, who not, was not present here in the House, um, who, whose character, in, in my view, was impugned during that presentation. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying Madam Speaker, for uh, Madam Speaker, I'm saying for the sake, let, let, me, let me finish the statement, for the sake of completeness. No, 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 Madam Speaker, we, Madam Speaker, no, let, 
Let me, no, 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 let me finish the point. You have a member, a member of the house, a member of the house who was not here. Who, just let me finish the statement, you can talk afterwards. No, no, but you can't stop me from talking. <laughs> no, you, you cannot, you raise the name of a member, a former member of this place who was not, who was not here. Who was not here. So when you, when you, when you are seeking protection, Extend it to other people. Listen. When you are seeking uh, protection, honorable member, extend honorable it. members, honorable members. May, may I finish? May I finish the point? So he will. You, he will have an opportunity, Madam Speaker. In your absence, the former Attorney General. Again, and here's here's why this is here's why this is important, Madam Speaker. When persons are being accused of things like treason. Uh, derelict. Let me finish. Let, let me let me finish. Let me finish. Let me let me finish the statement. Let me let me finish the statement. Allow me, Madam Speaker. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. Just pause for a moment. Marco City. Members. Marco City. Allow me to hear from. But you have not heard me, Madam Speaker. I, 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 I have heard you. To, you. I have heard you. you no, you, you have said, not heard me. You, you have not heard me, Madam Speaker. You have not heard me, Madam Speaker. How you can tell me I have not heard you? No, because I've not finished my I, statement. You, I, I, I am concerned that you are finished. I am asking no, I'm the not, member. I'm not finished. Uh, listen, I am not stop. finished. Marco City. I'm not finished. Marco Madam City. Speaker. You have said your piece. No, I, have I am not, now I have asking not said the my member piece. from I have from not said to my say piece. to me what he the, said while what transpired while no. I was not here. Why the accusation is on this no, floor. Madam, Madam and then I will come back to you. Allow me to get my understanding. You don't tell me that you're not finished. I say that I, I have heard you place something on this floor and I'm asking for the member to respond to that. You don't tell me that. My understanding is you said that a member, a past attorney general has been accused of treason. I heard you. Now I am asking the member for Carmichael to say to me, to Carmichael to say to me what transpired. Honorable member for Carmichael. The member for West Grand Bahama and Bimini. May I ask, Madam Speaker? Listen, I Madam have a Speaker, million other people in here. Madam Speaker, Did I am requesting, Madam, yes, yes. Madam Speaker, yes. I am requesting, Madam Speaker, that this matter be discussed in your offices. Yes. Madam Speaker, so I do now move for the lunch break. Madam yes. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. No, no, we it has been moved and seconded no, no. that the business of this house be suspended until... Until 3 p.m. As many are in favor will remain seated. Those opposed will stand. The business of this house stands suspended until 3 p.m.